For more now, we're joined by Dr. Katya Kamar, Kamkar. She's a clinical psychologist at CAMH and is actually from Nice. She's in Toronto this afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, let me know, I guess, to begin with, being from Nice, although you're here, what were your thoughts hearing about this attack? Well, of course, like everyone else, I'm, I'm devastated. This is, this is very sad. Um, I know that we all feel the sense of um, the sense of fear and anxiety, the sense of insecurity, and it's just a tremendous loss for for really everyone involved. So it, it's I really feel the devastation, and and particularly devastating, of course, for those who survived the Absolutely. attack, for those that witnessed all of this. What might they be going through in terms of the psychological effects, short and long term? And you're right. I mean, there are devastations really at different level. We're talking about the loss of human lives, injuries, pain, community devastations and destructions, financial losses. So there are very much devastations at uh, various levels. And there is also this diminished really very much when we hear of those things and whenever we are impacted with this diminished sense of well-being and, and control and uh, sense of diminished um, security. I mean, there are various stages that uh, people can very much go through. There is, of course, first the impact stage where people try to survive and protect their lives and the lives of other ones and then of course it's accompanied by a variety of emotions sadness shock and fear and then of course there is a post disaster phase a phase where people try to again run away and might want to even withdraw for many any of the reminders they might also have the feelings of hopelessness and helplessness and then there is a recovery stage uh, where people try to adjust to um, to to all the, the, the this negativity but of course uh, this uh, this adjustment very much depends on on the severity, the severity of the impact. And the latter stage is, of course, if we start having increasing negative thoughts and images, flashbacks, nightmares, to the point that they increase over time or interfere with our uh, functioning, that could lead to symptoms of post-traumatic stress. And that's true for adults, including, uh, including children, and also including uh, first responders as well. And for adults, I mean, yes, it affects adults, and it does affect children, as in this case, so many children were at that Absolutely. event. Absolutely. You know, and tell me about, you know, treating a child who might have PTSD. Um, you know, it's very important to limit as much as it could be possible and realistic any kind of re-exposure to those traumatic events, so media exposures or images, and then also minimizing, again, as much as possible adult conversations around children. At this point, what's important for them is for them to regain and to promote the sense, of, the sense of safety and security, love and care and warmth, and then of course the connection with family, community, teachers and school, and then to re-engage them in a, again their structure and routines. At this time, really what's important for them is it's, it's really all those. And of course for adults, seeking support is extremely important, sharing experiences and thoughts and feelings. It's also important to, to remind ourselves to maintain a very healthy and hopeful outlook mm -hmm. and to not only are we are facing those strategies, but at the same time, what are some of the positives and some of the kind of meaningful places and activities and places that could provide comfort and encouragement? And we also know that at times positives could be derived from negative, uh, from those very tragic events, such that um, learning, strengthening relationships, and uh, personal growth. Mm. Right, and I appreciate your time so much. Thank you, Thank Dr. Katya Kamkar, for joining us.